Hey gang, hope everybody's doing fantastic today. Sharon and I are on the road, left, left floor a few days ago. We're in Mobile, or just outside of Mobile, Alabama at Theodore, Alabama at All About Relaxing RV Park. Video's coming on that, that's gonna be awesome. But I'm working on my RV to-do list. I always try to keep up on different things. Um, and today we're gonna be installing a bus bar. And what if- Bar? Uh, Sharon? Did I hear the word bar? You did, Sharon, but you heard bus bar. Oh, that's not a kind of bar I'm interested in. You just continue on, Dwight. Oh, I'm sure. But stay tuned. We're going to learn all about these little guys and why you should use them. All right. First things first. What is a bus bar? Well, it is a simple connection point for electrical needs. Now, I have one right here in front of my hand. And each one of these lugs that you see on here is an electrical connection. And what it allows us to do is connect our battery to one point and other items that we need power 12 volt in this situation to the bus bar without having to always connect to the battery all right so let me show you some of the things that we're going to be doing here and give you an idea of the pieces and parts involved all right the pieces and parts we have our bus bars we have a positive side and a negative side and these are just protective covers uh, and these guys are pretty heavy duty. I got them off of Amazon. I'll put a link in our store. Um, these things are phenomenal. They're made, or I bought them from Rex Racing. So they're pretty stout. They're, they're heavy duty. They'll, they could be used for lots of different things, okay? Also, the battery wire that we're gonna use from the battery to the bus bar on one end to make, to make the connection is number 10 stranded wire. Healthy enough to um, carry any loads and light enough to be able to be maneuverable and stuff. So that's number 10. We're going to use red and black, okay, because that's positive and negative. And then our connections. We have some connectors here that we're going to be pinching off and connecting up to the uh, battery and stuff. And also to mount this to the wall inside the battery box area, as you can see, I already have two mounted in there. We'll go over that in just a second. I've used stainless steel screws and hardware. That's these guys right here. I got the winds out here, so I'm trying to keep them covered up here. But they're stainless nuts, washers, flat washers, bolts, and lock washers. Always put lock washers on stuff, okay? So those are pretty much, and some of the tools, you'll need wire cutters, a screwdriver, or a little, and um, crescent wrench to get in back behind and tighten the nuts up, and a drill to drill the holes for the, uh, for the bolts to go through, okay? So those are some of the pieces and parts that we use. So let's uh, take a look over here at the uh, battery box. All right, and our little coachman, the battery box is at the steps as you enter. They have two, two 12 volt batteries, okay? And, the, and there's nothing else in this side of the compartment. This side over here, I got my shoe holding up the top because it always wants to fall out. And this is where a lot of the connections, big connections are made for the RV and everything. So we're gonna stay away from that side. This is not a lot of room. And what I did decide to do is mount them on the back wall but always remember if you're going to mount them in a, an area where there is your batteries or anything else you have to move around that whatever you're putting in whether it's the bus bars or something else is not in each other's way with this one once i take the battery cables off i can actually turn the battery pull it out which is the way they designed this anyway because it's not deep enough this way just to pull them out even without the bus bars so then you can get those out of the way and what i did when i pulled them out was i cleaned up the batteries cleaned up the battery compartment that's a great time to do it it was all in great shape no leaks a little bit of scratch paint but that's about the size of it okay so from there what i did is i kind of eyeballed it a little bit and i they have to be lower than when the fly, when the step comes down so i got them in position marked them with sharpie markers and then i used an eighth inch bit to drill pilot holes and then a quarter inch bit to drill the 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 following holes the one that's going to be permanent then i put sharon help me but we put the quarter inch bolts and nuts on there to put them in place okay so that's kind of what we got going on then i reinstalled the batteries but i'm going to take the cables back off here in a minute because i have to put the put the uh, positives and negatives from the bus bar on there i'll show you all that whole operation here in just a second all right, I've got the 916 nuts taken off the connections. And this is a great time to check your connections. Make sure they're clean, no corrosion on them. Clean them up a little bit um, and inspect where the cables are all connected and put together. Just make sure things are in good shape. Anytime you do anything, just double check some stuff. It may save you some time in the future, right? Um, so we're gonna take all of this off. And when you do this, you always wanna make sure your cables don't touch 
especially your um, your positive and your negative you don't want them to touch together if you still have others connected so always start with your negative cables get them off and get them out of the way just kind of make sure they don't touch anything sometimes it's tough when they're thick so these little guys these little inter intermediate connectors they can just be set aside get your positive off and at that point the system's dead there's nothing there right and then take this off as well and again this is the time you want to look at your ends clean them up a little bit these are in pretty good shape you can still see copper it's still kind of shiny i might take a little bit of sandpaper or something just to kind of clean them up but both these are in pretty good shape okay so what we're going to do now is i'm going to make pigtails and it's going to go from the very end on the positive the very end then a negative and they're going to go to these these two these two terminals i'll probably put them put them back here on this battery um these are 12 volt batteries so that'll work out just fine so we're going to make our little pigtails and that'll be where these blocks where these bus bars get their power for me to run other things like one of the things we're going to do is exhaust fans behind the refrigerator for when it gets really hot outside keeps that cool I need to I want to put electric with uh, my hot water heater, which is just nothing but LP right now. So I'm going to put electrical with it as well. Put and you'll see that video. And then I have a 12 volt um, access port here on on the other side of this box. So that's what's going to get connected to there. Um, but also at some point I want to put on LED lights. So I might have to double one of these up for that um, undercarriage LED lights. So we'll uh, we'll approach that when it, when the time comes. But in, in the meantime, let's get these. Uh, Let's get these uh, pigtails built. All right, gang. I went ahead and used my side cutters and eyeballed some measurements. What I'm going to do is actually use the negative off of the rear battery. I'm going to use the positive off the front battery. That'll still give me the 12 volts, okay, that I need for doing this. So I'm going to get the ends of these. Let me dig that one back up. I'm going to get the ends of the cable stripped and get the um, ends put on them, and then we'll show you that before we install. All right, we got both of them ready to go. We got our lugs, our, our loops put on both ends, okay, and now we're going to get these things installed onto the batteries. Now, the reason I can put the negative on one battery and the positive on a different battery is because these are 12 volt batteries in parallel what that means it's the same voltage it's 12 volts but they do it that way because you get more amps at that point okay which is what you really need to run an rv you need um long-standing power long-staying power that's what new lithium um, stuff's all about um so anyway that's what we're going to do we're going to get these hooked up we'll get the cables all put back on and then um We'll get them all hooked to the bus bars, and I'll kind of show you that completed operation here in just a minute. And then we'll go over again why I'm doing this. And I also have another set of these bus bars that I'm going to use for a different project, and I'll tell you about that as well. All right, gang, we got her all hooked up. I'm going to show you the final connections and all. We're all going to put a test light on it to make sure that we have our 12 volt where we need it. Okay, and then we'll go over the benefits of having what I've done here. Okay, so come on in, Sharon. Sharon's helping us because she really wants that margarita. Hi. She wants to get to that <laughs> bar, okay? So come on in, Sharon. We're gonna show them what I got here, if you can reach in. Okay, kind of show this area right in here. All right, now as you can see, I have my positive, the wires that we cut. I got a positive on that battery and a negative on this battery, way over here. And it goes to, the negative goes to the end lug on that right side negative bus bar. And the positive cable goes here, okay? So right now, with the battery cables connected up for the coach, these are positive with 12 volt. And we're gonna go check that out right now. So Sharon, keep the camera right in there because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the very end lug because it's easy to get to and put my negative alligator clip on there. All right, and when I touch the positive here, the light should light up and it does. So you guys can see that in the, in the video. There you go, it's light up. That means there's 12 volt going all the way across there so anything we do in the future anything i want to add in like i talked about the heater uh for the water heater the electric part of it the um, exhaust fans for the fridge um they all could be connected to right here also in the near future i'm going to put one of these a set of these under the hood and i'm going that's going to come off the chassis battery what that's going to be for is for 
air horns. What? America. Nothing says air horns like America, or nothing says America like air horns. <laughs> so we're going to do some of that. Plus, oh my God. Plus, on one of these, I'm going to do double tapping probably because I want to put some LED lights on the... Um, on the um, RV. So there's going to be some, lots of accessories hooked to this. So that's the benefit of having this connection point, right? Once those are on the batteries like they are, you don't have to put them, you don't have to take things on up. You don't want a stack of connectors on your battery. Just makes for looser connections and stuff and just more stuff to maintain. All right. So anyway, that's what we did today or over the last couple days because we've been dodging rain and stuff. So now we got to get Sharon to the bar so she can get not a bus bar, but a margarita bar. That's right. Taco Tuesday, maybe, huh? Ooh. And a margarita. All right. So I hope you guys learned this. Comment below. Give me a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Subscribe. We, again, yep. all, all the interaction is, is really helps us with algorithms yep. and YouTube and everything. We love having you guys come along with us and, uh, you know, share our adventures. And we want to hear about yours as well. Yeah, absolutely. If you've done something like this, let me know how it mm -hmm. turned out. And, you know, we can talk back and forth a little bit. All right. Have a Bye. great day.